Hi everyone, and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about Punnett squares, and particularly Punnett squares for monohybrid crosses. Now, Punnett squares are basically just diagrams. They are diagrams used to predict the possible outcomes of a genetic cross. Now, a cross in genetics is basically just a type of breeding experiment where you take two individuals and see the possible outcomes that their offspring can have. So, basically, possible combinations of gametes during fertilization. Remember that in humans, gametes are the sperm and the egg. Fertilization is the process of uniting a sperm and an egg to create a new individual. Now, Punnett squares are useful because they are visual representations of Mendelian inheritance. Mendelian inheritance are the patterns of inheritance elucidated by Gregor Mendel. These include the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking specifically about monohybrid crosses. These are crosses that follow the alleles of one gene. Alleles are alternative forms of a gene. For example, if the gene is for height, you might have a tall allele or a short allele. If the gene is for flower color, the plant might have a purple allele and a white allele. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Mendelian inheritance, including those laws we just discussed, then see my videos on those topics. But now let's get on to learning about how to use these Punnett squares. Now, first, you have to know about some notation. So, whenever we see a capital letter, like the capital A here, this represents a dominant allele. Whenever you see a lowercase letter, like the lowercase a here, that represents a recessive allele. What do these mean? Well, dominant alleles mask recessive alleles. For example, if we go back to talking about flower color in a given plant, the purple allele might be dominant, so it would mask the recessive allele, or the white allele. This means that if a plant had both a purple allele and a white allele, it would have purple flowers, because the purple allele is the dominant one. The same thing for something like height. If the tall allele is dominant, even if someone has a tall allele and a short allele, they would express the tall phenotype. Phenotype meaning the physical appearance. Now, something else to think about is when we're talking about individuals that have two alleles, sometimes individuals can have two identical alleles, or two dominant alleles, for example, or two recessive alleles, rather than one of each. This is called being homozygous. It's also possible for an individual to have two different alleles. So for example, one dominant and one recessive. This is called being heterozygous. So now that we understand the notation, let's get to the Punnett squares for monohybrid crosses. Here we have a parent, a mother, who is heterozygous. So she has a dominant allele and a recessive allele. And this means that she can give one of those alleles to any of her offspring. We have a father here who has sperm, and he is also heterozygous. So his sperm can contain either the dominant allele or the recessive allele because he has both to give away. In here, we write the possible outcomes for the offspring. 
So for example, in this box, this offspring can get a dominant allele from the mother and a dominant allele from the father, making them homozygous dominant. Here, they can get a dominant allele from the father, a recessive allele from the mother, making them heterozygous. We see the same thing with this offspring, except that they're getting the dominant allele from the mother and the recessive allele from the father, but still heterozygous. This offspring down here gets a recessive allele from the mother and a recessive allele from the father, making them homozygous recessive. So all this Punnett square means is that with any offspring from these two individuals, there is a one-fourth chance that the offspring will be homozygous dominant, a one-fourth chance that the offspring will be homozygous recessive, and a half chance, or a fourth plus a fourth, that the offspring would be heterozygous. And you can see that these proportions change based on the alleles that the parents have. For example, if we come to this cross where we have a mother with two recessive alleles and a father with two dominant alleles, so here we have the two parents both being homozygous, one for the dominant allele, one for the recessive allele, what do the possible combinations look like for the offspring? Well, because the father only has dominant alleles to give away, every offspring would get a dominant allele from the father. Because the mother only has recessive alleles to give away, every offspring would get a recessive allele from the mother. So you see with this monohybrid cross, every offspring is going to be heterozygous. So there is a 100% chance that all of their offspring would be heterozygous for this particular gene. And that is how you use Punnett squares to look at the possible combinations for the offspring when we're looking for one gene, so monohybrid crosses. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in learning more about Punnett squares, see my other video on dihybrid crosses. And thanks for watching.